Climate Error The conventional wisdom that CO2 emissions are the sole cause of global warming and climate change is wrong. This claim is supported among others by the latest NASA study published by the Goddard Institute in December 2015. Carbon dioxide can be found over the entire Earth's surface regardless of where it was released. As such, it causes equal thermal response everywhere. The Goddard Institute has calculated the temperature impacts of several of these variables. Observations from the periods between the years 1850 to 2005 were used for computer simulations. Climatologist Gavin Schmidt, director of NASA's Goddard Institute, has confirmed this too when he said, The problem with that approach is that it falls way short of capturing the individual regional impacts of each of those variables, he said, adding that in the last 10 years only has there been enough available data on aerosols to let go of simple assumptions and instead attempt detailed calculations. The climatologist Kate Marvel claims that aerosols which are created from burning fossil fuels mostly confined to the Northern Hemisphere contribute to atmospheric cooling because they reflect solar radiation back to space. Such cooling can be observed only locally. The scientist does not hesitate to add that there is more land in the Northern Hemisphere which is more sensitive to atmospheric changes and extreme temperatures. This clearly shows that if extreme temperatures can be observed in the Northern Hemisphere, their causes should be looked for elsewhere, in particular in human activities that modify lands, such as deforestation or new ways of land cultivation. This NASA study too serves to prove that the lands and soils and human activities on them are an important factor impacting the overall global warming and negative development of climate change which has long been overlooked. According to scientific measurements, one cubic meter of soil in Europe contains some 200 to 500 liters of water. The water is mainly contained in pores found in soil, which basically represent drinking water reservoirs, going all the way to plant roots, head streams, and groundwater sources. Thus, they are essential and irreplaceable for the existence of life on continents. However, the pores can only perform their functions as long as they are not compressed or broken. Rainwater cannot soak into compressed soil, and it runs off fast along the surface to lower areas instead, causing floods and washing fertile soil away into dams and oceans. Pores, which are compressed in the process of man-made slopes construction, which are usually built or emerge above areas of compressed soil, roads, highways, and tracks left by heavy machinery, as well as in walls of drainage canals, and in ditches along the roads are capable of draining entire landscapes above them. These two direct results of human activity, compressed soil and man-made slopes, are spreading thanks to new technologies so quickly and furtively that most people hardly notice them. By compressing pores in the ground and by increasing the number of compressed areas, we are draining our lands every day with an increasing speed. Yet, this is not the only negative consequence of human activity when it comes to compressing soil. Fast outflow of water from lands causes floods and landslides, drying of brooks and rivers, and decreasing of groundwater levels. Drained continents heated by solar radiation subsequently heat up the atmosphere, which results in global warming. This leads to droughts and forest fires, melting of glaciers, rising of ocean levels. We tend to blame greenhouse gases and especially CO2 for these catastrophes, yet the real problem is not in the atmosphere above us, but right under our feet on the ground that feeds us. 
Let us look at the situation in Slovakia, a country with an area of 49,036 kilometers squared in Central Europe. According to statistics, there are 4.7% of build-up areas in Slovakia, that is areas where rainwater and melting snow cannot soak into the ground. This figure includes buildings, roads with a total length of 42,993 kilometers, forest roads with a total length of 40,300 kilometers. The figure above does not include areas with compressed soil which can be found on unused logging tracks and tracks left by heavy machinery. It is estimated that the total length of such tracks is more than three times that of the forest roads, that is some 120,000 kilometers approximately. Roads, forest roads, Logging tracks and tracks left by heavy machinery amount to some 203,000 kilometers. Man-made slopes and ditches or above roads can be found next to almost all such roads and tracks. Slovakia also has about 6,000 kilometers of slopes and draining canals, which has to be added to the number above. The total length of all draining slopes in our country is approximately 210,000 kilometers. My measurements have shown that the level of water in canals and ditches directly affects the groundwater levels in the surrounding countryside. When the level of water in these canals rises or falls in times of heavy rainfall or during the snow melts, the same is happening with the groundwater levels in the surrounding fields. I have verified this in measuring water levels in a well located 350 meters away from such a canal. As can be seen from the diagram, groundwater levels can rise or drop by almost one meter in the course of a very short time. If we assume that these man-made slopes drain the surrounding countryside because of broken pores as far as 150 meters away from the slopes throughout the year, the area of drained land amounts to 31,500 km squared, which represents 65% of the total area of Slovakia. And if we factor in the blanket draining of agricultural land and slopes in mountainous areas above small gardens and other constructions, it is only natural that we see water depletion in record-breaking heat waves. We only need to take one look at the dry brooks, fields, forests, empty wells, and the nearly empty riverbeds everywhere in Slovakia to see these claims are true. A similar situation can be seen in other countries too. I have visited various European countries, as well as Israel and South Korea, where I had the chance to witness the extent of human activity caused by compressed soil and man-made slopes. Moreover, satellite images prove that many countries like Brazil, USA, China or Malaysia face the same problem. And yet, the solution is really simple. Measures to be taken in forests. Unused logging tracks, tracks left by heavy machinery and compressed soil areas need to be treated by digging them thoroughly in order for them to retain rainwater. It is important that diggers proceed from the highest place downwards as this will allow to retain every fallen branch of foliage and more importantly, rainwater in forests. Rainwater and water from melting snow stays longer on the freshly dug ground, gradually soaking in through pores created as the time proceeds. When we treat compressed soil and man-made slopes above it as deep as 2 meters, the water, which was discharged from the soil through broken pores previously to this treatment, will soak into it immediately. In a few years, there will be no more signs of man-made slopes or compressed soil and the nature will revive. A state-of-the-art project, which I have designed for a forest meadow with an artificially created slope, will illustrate how water runoff can be prevented. Five years ago, 
The slope was artificially created on a meadow which caused rainwater to run off through broken pores, eroding areas beneath the slope. Newly planted willow trees and wooden constructions located under the slope were supposed to solve the problem. However, this solution was ineffective and there was a constant water runoff from the slope which created a deep furrow along the entire length of the meadow. In the autumn of 2015, I decided to carry out the following project. The 4 meters high slope was flattened by a digger. We have marked a 40 meters squared area above the lower edge of the slope, dividing it into 4 sections equal in size. We have also treated the soil by digging it thoroughly in order to facilitate the soaking of water into the ground. Gradually, we have simulated a 400 mm per meter squared rainfall for 118 hours over each area. We started a rainfall simulation over the area furthest away from the edge of the slope, which absorbed and contained the largest volumes of water for the longest periods of time. Soil in the area closest to the lower edge of the slope absorbed the smallest amount of water. Out of the total volume of 16,000 liters of water used in the simulation, the soil retained 8,670 liters and 7,330 liters ran off through broken pores. This volume represents 45.8% of the total volume of the simulated rainfall. We have thus proven that broken pores drain water from the soil very quickly and that as a result, soil is washed away and erosion of the slope and the meadow beneath it occurs. Shortly after the simulation, about 10 cubic meters of soil slid down from the slope and we used a digger to even it out again. In the second part of the test, we have built a dike in front of the man-made slope. We have then again simulated a 400 millimeter per meter squared rainfall on the 40 meter squared area of land. During the simulation, which lasted for 384 hours, 16,000 liters of water were used. On average, the soil absorbed 25 millimeters of rainfall in one day. Not a single drop of water was discharged by the new dike. The soil retained all of the water, which means that the areas under the slope will not dry out and the water will not erode the soil. Immediately after the simulation, we dug four holes each three meters deep. There was no water in any of them. The vast volume of water basically disappeared into the soil, which had been drained and abused for a long period of time. After some terrain adjustments, we have sown grass over the entire area and the nature will be revived in the coming spring. However, there is also another way to prevent water discharge through broken pores and man-made slopes. We can do this by digging ditches approximately 1 meters wide and 2 to 4 meters deep along the contour lines of the slope, some 5 to 20 meters above the slope. Impervious foil should be placed at the bottom of these ditches so that the water in the soil in them does not soak into the pores underneath. It will then soak into the soil and gradually into the pores in the low layers of the soil beneath. Measures to be taken on agricultural soil. Deep plowing should be performed. An additional device should be installed behind tractor wheels to loosen the soil after tractors compress it when they ride on agricultural soil to sow or fertilize crops. Small impermeable constructions should be built in draining ditches. These constructions should also have an opening allowing for the regulation of water levels in these ditches as well as the regulation of groundwater levels on the fields along the entire length of the canal. Where the agricultural land surface is lower than the one of surrounding roads, I suggest draining ditches be removed so that they no longer drain the countryside around them. It is an indisputable fact that major European roads that are at the same height as surrounding agricultural lands can do without similar ditches being built next to them, which has been proven by decades of problem-free operation of such roads. Where ditches along roads are needed and are very deep, I suggest similar measures as those recommended for draining canals to be applied. 
If we implement the proposed measures in forests and on agricultural lands, we can retain vast volumes of rainwater on continents and subsequently stop the overheating of continents by solar radiation, stop the overheating of the atmosphere. Water vapor reflecting solar radiation out of the atmosphere will rise into the atmosphere instead of dry, hot air, thanks to which continents will be heated by rays only partially, prevent floods, revive sources of brooks and rivers, make groundwater levels rise, prevent droughts and fires, stop the melting of glaciers and the rising of ocean levels, and thus positively affect climate change. We are draining continents by our systematic activities, even though it is possible to stop this from happening by adopting relatively simple measures. The implementation of measures I propose can help us secure sufficient amounts of drinking water even for future generations and solve the global problem lying right under our feet.